Welcome back, my friends. Look at this. It's already dry right here. So in the last episode here, I told you that I had some snow mold going on. And so today it's nice enough outside. It looks like spring is coming early this year. So it's nice enough outside today to go out and rake through some of this. I want to just rake through some of the areas, make sure I get some airflow going to all of that. And hopefully it will recover sooner rather than later. dogs are enjoying the sunshine and let's face it we're all enjoying the sunshine but today I want to get a soil temp reading just see what's going on down in the lawn right now there's a few greener areas that have greened up quicker that I'm just curious as well of maybe what the temperature difference might be you want to see what the soil temp is you're interested that's what I thought 44.2, so it's definitely starting to come up quicker than it has been in the last couple days, but the sunshine helps a lot. There's one spot over here that I see that's a much greener. I'm gonna try and see if there's any difference there. Just kind of curious as to what's going on. So this spot right here, you can see Joey wants to be in the picture, I guess. Uh, Enzo does too, so the spot is just much greener than everything else around it, which I noticed, so sometimes you will get little hot spot. This little spot here looks much warmer than the other areas. About 49 and a half, somewhere around there. So that's definitely exactly why it's much greener than everything else around it. That snow mold footage when I was doing the raking was just from a couple days ago. I think today it's already looking better. More increased airflow down there, more sunshine. And it's, it's looking like once I can mow and get some of the brown stuff cut off the top, once things start really growing well, then it should look good. So what happens here is that we've got a bunch of green happening, but all this stuff on top is just frost burn. So what happens is the leaves are just sitting there all winter. They get kind of frost burnt and brown on the top. They will look like that, but you can see how much green is at the bottom. So once all this gets cut off and you don't have the risk of a bunch of frost happening again, then everything will be clean and green and looking great. Uh, today I wanted to touch on a couple more questions for the Ask RKLC segment, so I haven't done one of those in just a couple weeks. So this first one was a comment that I got on YouTube. It says, is now a good time to use Tenacity? Do you spot treat or treat the entire lawn? Our daytime temps have been averaging around 50. So Tenacity is a weed killer that works for a whole lot of different types of weeds and it works well, but with any weed killer you need to be waiting until the weeds are actively growing in the spring, which usually means that probably around the first couple times that you mow and the grass is actively growing as well. So with tenacity it's the same because it kind of bleaches the plant so that it's not allowing the plant to make its own food. And because of this, then the plant eventually dies out. This works, but you need to make sure those weeds are actively growing. For right now, if you have some active weeds growing, I would consider more of an ester-based form formula of some kind of weed killer, the ester-based stuff will be better in the colder temperatures. It just works better at those lower temperatures in the early spring or early fall. So if you wait a few more weeks, if you can handle that, I know it's tough to see a bunch of weeds growing and you want to get out there and take care of them. But if you can wait a couple more weeks until maybe your first couple mows, then start taking care of your weeds. I spot spray things, that was the second part of the question. If you have something that's so widespread that you feel like you need some weed control for a large area, then you definitely can do that. Last year in my project lawn, I did an application that kind of was a hose end spray version of some things that got rid of a whole bunch of weeds in that lawn. But otherwise, spot spraying works well. The reason there is that you don't really need to be spraying a whole bunch of areas in your lawn that don't have any weeds. This is a, again kind of the reason too that most of us don't use any weed and feed products just because you're broadcasting it out 
into a whole big area that you don't really need weed killer or any weed control. Spot spraying works well and I have some videos that I'll link to from previous years on spot spraying and kind of how to do that whole method. And the next question that I got is one from Instagram. It says, hello Ryan, we just bought our first house. We're in Wisconsin, just east of the Twin Cities. And now that snow is melting, I'm noticing some pretty extensive vole damage. Any ideas for lawn repair or vole prevention? So as you know, if you've been watching um, last year or years past, I've had some vole damage in my yard. So what these are are sort of like little field mice that once you have a lot of snow on your lawn, there's opportunity for them to be underneath there and they go looking for food and they kind of burrow through the top layers of the grass. Usually they don't remove the entire grass. It will look like it because you'll see a whole bunch of dead grass on top of the lawn when the snow melts. Usually from my experience they haven't eaten the actual crown of the plant. They've usually eaten off all those leaves looking for food. So in the past, last year actually I did a video on this which I'll link, but what I did was I removed all that dead stuff with a rake. I looked closely. I saw the crowns of the plant looked pretty green and it looked like they were going to be growing again once our temperatures came up. So I targeted some starter fertilizer or fertilizer in general on those areas earlier than I normally would. You can use a starter, you can use regular, you can also, if you want the fastest sort of way of getting that to grow in, you could use a liquid fertilizer. Target those areas and watch that kind of grow back in. Now, if it seems so extensive and you have a grass type like tall fescue or a ryegrass that is going to be something that's a bunch grass and it's it's not going to spread itself very much like bluegrass would, then you may have to look at throwing some seed in those areas. But first, before you go doing any of that seeding, I would see how it responds in the first couple weeks of spring once the grass is actively growing, once you're mowing, and see how it looks like it's going to respond. You should see it start to bounce back. And if you don't, you can take some intervention at that point, but I really think it will come back okay. Get some fertilizer on it earlier than you normally would, water that in right away, and see what happens. All right, how about an update on the seed? So this was the Bermuda, and you can see, actually, since the last time that we did an update, it's starting to grow quite a bit. I took the temperature of the soil recently, and it was still only around 63. So this shouldn't be growing, you know, all that crazy at these temperatures, but it is growing. So I'm, I'm interested to see how this does outside once the temperatures come up outside. Uh, the next is our lawn food. This one was only one, a light spray of the lawn food and it's not very vigorous. And a really light spray of that didn't do too much. Does not surprise me because it is a 1648. So there's only 4% of the FOSS in there. So for getting seed going, that really doesn't surprise me too much. This one is the Kentucky Bluegrass, the Midnight doing well here. It's actually filling in a lot. I did the soil hume and the liquid starter fertilizer on this about three or four days ago and it's doing well. It's, it's looking good, but it is still very fine grass at this point. This one is the liquid starter, which you can see definitely even compared to the lawn food here, major difference in how much it is leafing out and it just looks nice and thick in there. I need to cut that again soon. Uh, this one is just the soil hume. So really all I was doing to test there was that there's no fertilizer in that. So no fertilizer whatsoever, but there's kelp in it, which should help to get some root growth going. I didn't anticipate that it would do too much without any fertilizer whatsoever, but it's not bad. So this is my control, which I've just given this water, nothing else. So you can kind of compare these here, like the liquid starter versus this. The liquid starter is much, much thicker, which I would anticipate. Between the soil hume, which had no fertilizer, and this, which had nothing at all, these leaves here on the soil hume just look slightly thicker, like they're maturing just slightly faster. So definitely what's pushed things along the most has been the liquid starter, which is very apparent that it should do that. And also adding the soil hume and the liquid starter has helped this bluegrass to grow and mature pretty fast too. Lastly, I forgot to tell you, this is the sand. That one I went really heavy with fertilizer, really heavy with the soil hume on there, and I pretty much burnt it with fertilizer. So it's still alive. There's a few strands coming back, but for the most part, it did not do very well and it's all curled up because I burnt it. 
So definitely these are not any extremely scientific tests that I'm doing, mainly just for fun. I'm gonna get these outside though once the weather is consistently nice and get it some natural sunlight and air out there. And so far it's been a fun little project to do during winter when I wasn't able to go outside and do anything anyway. So I promised you I would talk about our new little guy here, Enzo. So our dogs are Westies, that is West Highland White Terriers and we've adopted five of them total. So unfortunately two of them have passed away. We adopted our first one in 2007 and she just passed away last year, but we've got three of them currently. My wife especially, it's pretty much her life goal to work with a lot of senior animals and adoption and stuff like that. So this little guy we got about three weeks ago, surprisingly he's actually 12 years old. He looks really young, but he was in a breeding facility for his whole life. So up until this point, he doesn't really understand a whole lot about normal life for a dog so that's really what we try to do is give them the best life that we possibly can while they're uh, they're kind of learning everything even though they're an older dog and he's got a couple health issues that we're working through but he uh, he's content and he's having a blast with the other two that we have so I just wanted to touch on that briefly I know some of you have asked about our Westies and kind of the whole story behind them so this is this is the newest little guy, and I'll, I'll talk about them more probably throughout the year. It looks like they're going to be joining me in the yard quite a bit. And you know what? Just for fun today, I feel like giving away a t-shirt. So here's what I got. So I've got a Simple Lawn Solutions t-shirt today. I have some various sizes, so whoever wins, you can tell me what size you have. I believe I have larges, extra large, and some 2XL. I'm going to go to a video that has fewer amount of views and fewer amount of comments recently so that I know that the people that were commenting are the ones who are always watching. I put that in there so I'm gonna hit get YouTube comments. This is the spring inspiration video. So it's got 115 comments and right now I'm going to pick the winner. The winner is Marnie Werner and says got nine inches of snow overnight. Spring can't come soon enough. Marnie Werner, if you are watching right now, go ahead and email me at ryanorlawncare at gmail.com. I will get you a t-shirt. And um, yeah, so check out those videos that I mentioned earlier right here. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.